All right, you guys, welcome. My name is Julius Gilger. Today, I'm excited to have on a business partner of ours, Casey Trout. She's been with us for about 10 months um, with no prior sales experience, no prior experience in the life insurance industry. And I'm excited to have Casey on. I don't want to take away her thunder. Casey, thanks for joining. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, we're excited to have you and learn from you. And so um, let's jump right in. So if you can start and just kind of share with us a little bit of your journey. Um, what were you doing before FFL? How did you find us? And um, and then we'll kind of go from there. Yeah, cool. So um, I graduated from college in 2019, spring of 2019. And then I had cheered all throughout college, worked at like a, a Universal Cheerleaders Association for like every summer after, you know, after like in between. So that did that right after college. And then um, I was like, okay, well, I need to find like a big girl job. So I went into like marketing and business development. I uh, did that for about like six months. And to be completely honest, I did not like it at all. Um, I quickly realized that like the nine to five desk life like wasn't for me. Um, but then I was, that was kind of throughout the beginning of 2020. And then I was looking for a job all of 2020 because as soon as I had stopped working there, COVID had hit. So now I'm trying to interview people can't, you know, see me face to face, that sort of thing. So closer to uh, me coming to FFL, I was doing like some event planning for a small like wedding floral company in Scottsdale, Arizona. And then, um, you know, juggling a bunch of different things. And how I even came to FFL was Nina Damjanovic had messaged me on LinkedIn. And uh, there's like you know, if you're on LinkedIn, it's like hundreds of messages, like not really a day, but you know, and you like don't open any of them. Right. So for me, it's very much a God thing that I even opened her message because I don't know why I did, <laughs> you know, so your attention um, about her message. Uh, I mean, it was just like, it was really casual. It was just like, Hey, Casey, um, have you ever thought about like getting your insurance license? Like it was just really straightforward. And, I, and in my brain, I was like, no, <laughs> you know, like I was wanting to do event planning or something like that. And so I was like, no, but then I looked into, she sent me the company overview video. And so I looked at that and then I had my dad look at it cause I trust his business decisions. And, and he was like, it looks like a great company model and I think you should go for it. And I was like, okay. So, you know, at that point I really had nothing to lose. I already wasn't working full time. And so I was like, well, I do need to like make money and do something and I want to. So that was in August of 2020. And then um, I officially got started with FFL in December of 2020. So I'm rolling into my 10th month. Okay. All right. So talk to us a little bit about that. Did you have any experience um, in being in business for yourself? Like, did, did you have any sales experience? Did you do anything that was ever commission only? No, um, I tried, you know, some little things. I'm not sure if I can say their name on here, but I had tried different, different, like small things. Um, you can say what it is. And, just don't say company names. Okay. Gotcha. So it was, it was network marketing okay. and it was just for like a really small period of time. And I quickly realized that I was like, this kind of model is not built for me. Like I was like, I just, of course I liked the idea of it and everything, but I had tried that for like maybe like a month or two and it just did not, it was not happening for me. So, but that's the only thing that I've ever done fully commission based or sales wise. Okay. So, so really very limited experience doing that. And then, yeah. so how did it feel going from having a steady income? I mean, I know you were kind of trying to find your way after college, but what did it feel like going to a commission only type job um, where you, you had to fend for yourself? You have to, you know, earn your income per se. What right. Did that feel like what, what was your maybe first 30, 60 days? What did that look like for you? Because, you know, we have a lot of new agents here that they're going through this, right? They're, they're used to a steady income. Um, so going into a commission only environment could be challenging for some. So I want to hear for you what that looked like and what that felt like. Yeah. So, I mean, you make a really good point that I know a lot of people are going through similar things. They're trying to find something bigger and, and most of the people that are attracted to FFL are people who are mainly entrepreneurial mindset, right? Like they're looking for something more than nine to five is boring, but the steady income is a safe zone, right? So, mm -hmm. so for me, that transition um, of knowing like, okay, this is commission-based sales, like 
for my mentality, again, I kind of went into it. Like, I don't even, I don't even have any less money. So I have nothing to like lose. You know what I mean? I was like, I'm not at that point. I was not working full time, even though I would have liked to have been. Um, but you know, for someone transitioning from a steady full time income of salary or whatever, and they want something more, I think the biggest thing that you have to think and go back to is like, what is your why for doing so? Because don't get me wrong. Being here is absolutely incredible. But I even talk to people, you know, when I'm like recruiting of, I'm like, are you more of a nine to five person? You know, do you like the clock in clock out? Or are you willing to be on the phone most of the day, that sort of thing? So um, with that being said, rolling into something fully commission based and kind of having that mentality was I was going to work my tail off. Like I was like, I I don't have an option. I'm not even good at this yet. Like, I don't know, you know, of course there's that unknown. You're like, I don't know like how I'm going to do and and that whole thing. So basically my mentality was like, I'm going to work really hard to get good at this. And I gave myself, um, I was like, you can't even rethink of what you want to do till after 90 days. Okay. You're not, you're not good at anything until maybe about the 90 day mark. And then you have a good footing. So, so what, what I hear you saying is hard work. You realize you got to put in the work, right? You, you gave yourself a 90 day window. So you committed, right? You weren't mm-hmm. just one foot in one foot out, like just tipping your toe in the water. You, you said, I'm going in for 90 days and I got to revisit it after that. So, yeah. and I think that's from a mindset perspective, Casey, that's so smart and that's so strong because I see a lot of times where agents are like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to start with a $500 investment and I'm going to see how it goes. And based on my, my first few days, I'm going to make an emotional decision. They don't say I'm going to yeah. make an emotional decision. They make an emotional decision because maybe they didn't find success the first dial day or second dial, day, right? Like, so, right. so you having that mental tenacity and, you know, and, and an understanding that I need to give this 90 days before I can even adjust is, is powerful. So now take us back to your first 30 days, right? Like we have agents that are, today's their first dial day, right? What, what did that look like, right? What, what did your first week or two, three, four weeks, let's say of dial days look like? Did you struggle? What did you learn? What are some key things you learned through the process of dial days that helped you become a top producer? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So I think what really helped me was, first of all, if you're around an office, you need to go to an office. Like you've probably heard that time and time again, that helped me so much in my first 30 days. Cause my first dial day, like Nina is like my direct person and she couldn't be there. And so I had other people like surrounding me literally as I'm booking my first appointment, I had people over my shoulder being like, go, 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 go. Like literally. And then after I had gotten off the phone, they're giving me high fives and whatever. So, so that's something you can't get alone. Now, if you're not close to an office, that's why we have dial team. So I, went to the office more so because you're talking about kind of what my first 30 days looked like. Mm -hmm. Um, I went to the office every Monday and Thursday. Like I I went because I wanted to hear the people around me. I knew there were top producers in the office Mm -hmm. that were going to help me if I continued to struggle with, um, you know, if it was the same objection, like over and over and over. And I'm like, I'm just not doing any better with that. The next thing that I would say with my first 30 days is I was a student of the game. I wanted to be good. Like I wanted to figure this out. I was, that's part of my competitive nature. I was like, I'm not going to sit here and get told no the same 700,000 times for the same objection. You know what I mean? I was like, I want to hear what you would say, what Clay would say, what Brandon would say, Nina, like all those people that had done it before me. So the first 30 days, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like it was, it's challenging. Like it's, it's mentally challenging because you're like, man, like, you're sitting there grinding on the phone and maybe you hear the same stuff and you're like, shoot, I didn't know how to do that or whatever. So I know y'all have all felt that way, especially if you're new and that's okay. Like that's just part of a learning curve when you are at a very high level commission based sales job. Mm -hmm. So that being said, first 30 days, um, was really just, again, I gave myself a non-negotiable. I wasn't going to tap out. Like I was like, I'm here, so I might as well make it count. Uh, you know, and I asked a lot of questions, a lot of questions. If you talk to Nina, um, she probably even like that girl called me like 20 times a day. <laughs> but like, with that being said, now I know more so what I'm doing. You know what I mean? And even when I have questions, I still call Nina and those people because 
you should reach out to people that know when you don't. So that was mainly my first 30 days was a lot of questions, non-negotiable if I'm going to make this work and also doing everything that I possibly could to succeed. I didn't want to fail. So I was going to do everything I knew how to not to fail. So, all right. So talk to us because you're, you're a savage on the phone. I mean, <laughs> you've obviously, you've, you've made thousands of calls, right? You've talked to a lot of customers. You, um, you know what you're doing, right? So you've been through a lot of this. So let's, let's give the people some value today, something that they can use. I think one of the, one of the things people struggle with in the beginning is on the phone, not so much the scripting, but overcoming objections, right? Like that, yeah. that takes time. Would you agree? Like, it's not a thing yeah. that you get day one, day two, but you know, after a few hundred, a few thousand calls, it becomes easier. Right. So right. let's kind of go through just a few of the main objections. So, so if, if I'm a customer and I say, Hey, Casey, I already got that taken care of yesterday. What would you say? Okay, perfect, Julius. No worries at all. So basically my job as the local gal is to get you all of the information that you had not received before. So I just wanted to make sure your address was 1234 Main Street, correct? Yep. Okay, gotcha. And then I had your date of birth is 1208-1955. Does that sound right? Yep, that's still the same. Okay, perfect. So like I said, my job is to get the rest of that info out to you because you have not received all of your options. So and then basically, we can cut it there. That's where I roll to from there. So I just go right back to booking it. Like I didn't really even listen to you say that like I did and I acknowledged it. But yeah, I so you're, you're acknowledging it. You're making a statement. You're going back to your script. Mm -hmm. right? Okay, so let's let's throw another one out. Um, hey, Casey, you know what? Right now is not a good time. I don't have time. Yeah, totally understand. I'm crazy busy too. You would not believe the amount of people they have me seeing a day. So this should only take about 10, 15 minutes to go over the information. And it is time sensitive. So I'm only in your area the next two days. Um, so Julius, if you're still working full time, when's the latest you're typically ever home from work? The same process, right? Acknowledge it, make a statement back to the script. But now you've inserted your urgency rather than the letting the client control it based on their time. You're like, Hey, I'm busy. Yeah. So you took the control back. So that's, that's brilliant. Um, what's the other, there's, there's a few different rebuttals. Um, not interested, not interested. I was just about, all right, I'm not. Yeah. Interested. <laughs> okay. Perfect. No worries. Um, I'm not interested either. I mean, this is just part of the rules with my job. I'm sure you understand stupid roles. This is one of mine. Since I'm the local gal, I'm required to get that information out to you, what you do with it up to you. But like, I didn't really hear earlier, are you still working right now? Or are you retired or disabled? Working. There you go. Right back again. Mm -hmm. So guys, this, what Casey just did, if you notice, she's saying almost the same thing, or there's a process to it the same the, every time, right? So no matter what the objection is, it's you, you want to acknowledge them is what she's doing. Perfect. I hear you. I understand hey, my job as a local field underwriter is just to get you the information. She said that in just about every objection she said. And then she goes right back to the script to booking that. I mean, that's exactly how you overcome objections on the phone where it's it's fluid. So so obviously it's working for you, Casey. So great job there. And thank you for sharing, obviously. Um, yeah. And can I add one other thing to that when it comes to like yeah, objection? Please. So um, the biggest thing that I tend to hear like brand new people do is like, you're thinking so hard about the objection, right? Like when you first started, you're like, Oh my gosh, what do I say? You know what I mean? You're like, Where's Oh, my paper. What like what, what do yeah. I do? Like, like, ah. pages. <laughs> and right? so biggest thing is like, think about what would naturally come out of your mouth. You know what I'm saying? So like, I'm not interested and you know, your job as the underwriter is to get the information out to them. So naturally, if you don't want to be fought with on the phone, then you're not fighting someone on the phone. You know what I'm saying? So if you, if, if someone came back at me and said, okay, perfect, no worries. I'd be like, okay. You know, like, you know what I mean? It makes me listen a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. And so the biggest thing that I would say is to honestly not think too hard. I'm the queen of overthinking. So think of what would naturally come out of your mouth, you know? And especially like if, if you're married and this is one thing that, um, some new people kind of struggle with is making sure both the spouse, like if they're married, that they're both home. So again, if, if you're married or if you're not, uh, chances are, if you're making a financial decision like that, who are you going to need to talk to your spouse? So you want to make sure again, naturally, okay, if your spouse, so then, you know, when's typically latest that you're both home, 
because you want that to be really natural for you guys. So that's the biggest thing. And then also um, pausing. So if you pause, that is like they step their foot in the door and they're either going to hang up or they're going to just, no, 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 I want to blah, 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 because they just don't know who you are. They're not trying to be rude. They just don't know what this is and you're not making a point quick enough. Mm -hmm. So biggest thing is like not pausing. Notice how like when I was going through that with Julius, that took me time, but like I'm not pausing for him for anything. I'm not going to let him say anything to me. I'm going to let him talk when I want him to talk. It's a yes or no. It's a 6 p.m. or 8 p.m. It's a yes, I'm going to go grab the pen and paper to jot down your information. So that's the biggest thing. That's key. Yeah, you're, you're not asking also open-ended cl questions. You're asking closed-ended questions. You're picking one option or the other. Like you said, yes or no, yep. 6 or 8 o'clock, right? Like, yeah, perfect. Thank you for that. that that's, that's solid. Those are great reminders. Those are great tips. If this is, you know, your first time dialing or you're just kind of getting rolling and having some trouble that these are great pointers to, to book more appointments that'll help you today. So, all right. So Casey, let's move on. Let's talk a little bit about, um, let's talk about leads, right? I mean, how can we not talk about leads, right? So when you started, what did your lead purchase look like? And then what did it look like in your biggest month? How does, how has it changed? Right? So I know you've yeah. written over 40,000 in a month, right? So you're a diamond producer, obviously a top producer, but, but what did it look like in your first month or two, three, like how much were you spending? What leads were you purchasing to what does it look like now as a top producer? How has that evolved for you? Yeah. So when I first started, you know, obviously people, I heard someone say this and I was like, that's so key. Like people don't come into this normally with money, right? Like you're typically like, I got to make money. So for me, same exact thing. Um, I spent, first of all, for leads, as far as like what I got, um, I did final expense and a mix of CRM. So when I started, the CRM was brand new. So like that was new for everybody and whatever, but uh, it was final expense, game time actually. And then um, CRM stuff. And I had, you know, this was part of me being open and transparent with like my upline or my manager was I was like, hey, I wanted to spend a thousand, but I, I didn't comfortably have a thousand. Like I, I had it there, but yeah. so... With that being said, um, that is a conversation that I had with my person of being like, hey, I'll put down 500 and she was like, I'll help you with some. So, but that's because I was open and honest and I was willing to work through all that stuff. Like I didn't just get stuff because whatever. So I started out with that and I continued to do uh, final expense and CRM mix. Then I kind of transitioned to fully CRM and then kind of went back and forth. So right now um, I used to, when I first started was like, I understood what people were saying about the lead purchase money of it being like the less you spend, the less leads you get, the less chance you have. So I was like, okay. So even though I know y'all have felt it, you're like, Ugh! like when it's swiping the card or whatever, but you're like, but just if you work, you're, you're going to figure it out, ask questions, you'll figure it out. So for me, um, my mind has now changed to like, I'm like, whatever leads up, I need and get to get 15 appointments, I'm going to get them. So on average, I'm spending minimum is probably a thousand a week on leads. And then probably max is around like two grand. So, right. so let's, let's talk about your last 30 days. What leads have you been running on your, on your dial days? What, what exactly are you calling on? So right now I'm calling on CRM, um, right. some mailers, uh, specifically for like different travel trips. Okay. Um, and then some final expense I've mixed in live transfers. Okay. So, um, I'm, I'm not like a Daniel Kirby or an Alex straight yet, but I have, uh, run those. So it's, it's kind of a, a little bit different of a mix now that all that's been introduced, but predominantly if I'm calling leads, it's going to be CRM or, um, like final expense, that kind of thing. Okay. So CRM instant leads one monthly, are you doing age? Are you doing new? Just, I want to give the, I want to give people watching. A, f a feel of what that looks like and how many, right? Just for you. Right. So yeah. it, are you talking internet leads? You're talking age leads? You're talking, and then a mix of new mortgage as well? Yeah. So it's mainly uh, right now I'm running new final expense, not as much like new, new mortgage. Um, okay. But basically from the CRM, I'm grabbing every instant I can get. Okay. That's like my first thing is I'm grabbing those at, at, cause I am in Arizona. So I'm grabbing and looking at the CRM you know, whenever I can. I so mainly, 
mainly instance, but again, like one month, three month old, like that stuff still works. I mean, I know I haven't used that maybe as much recently, but I've done it before and had a decent dial day just fine. Okay. So it's predominantly if I'm pulling from the CRM, it's going to be instance. And then I also like mortgage mailers so that way I can see their writing. Got it. Okay. Um, perfect. Perfect. All right. So let's talk in home and then we'll kind of wrap this up. All right. And, cool. and I actually also want to talk about building too, but go ahead real quick. Yeah, no, that you go. I'm oh, good. Okay. I thought you had something to say. Sorry. Um, so let's talk in home real fast. So what tips have you learned that have helped you make it easier for yourself on the in home? I mean, I think the in home is pretty simplistic in the grand scheme of thing, you know, compared to the other activities we do, but what tips would you share that have helped you in the in home just to close at a higher rate, help more families, just, you know, share, share a little bit there. Yeah. So, you know, in comparison to when I was new and now I feel like I'm looking for all the little things I've seen before. Right. So I'm like, you know, for me, what's really helping me in my in-home is like that why has to be solid. If y'all are not doing a why, you are not getting a sale. Okay. It's just not like you can try if you're like a really talented salesperson, you can just pull it out of nowhere and like just do numbers. But most of the time, if you don't have an emotional pull and a specific person or a beneficiary to use over and over and over again, these people are going to think it's just numbers and they're going to shy away because they're not seeing the reality that when they pass $10,000 has to come out of somebody's pocket. So how do you ask your why question? So mine is, um, at the beginning, like when I'm sitting there, I show them the form. Like, so in the beginning, my initial why question is like, okay, so, Hey Mary, you had filled this out. This had gotten on my desk. Like what had pushed you to fill that out? And why were you looking for this kind of coverage? That's and then I just, I just let them talk. And then um, basically from there, I started to ask even more questions of like, so like, why do you think you need it? Mm -hmm. Like almost making them like telling me why they need it instead of me convincing them you should get it. You know what I mean? So like, why do you need that? Well, because my daughter's not going to, and I reinforce what they say. So it's like, if, if she says my daughter's not gonna be able to afford it, I'm like, okay, shoot. So like, does your daughter work right now or like, what does that look like? And so I'm making it a very big reality of thousands of dollars are coming out of someone's pocket for, and it's, you know, going to be their fault if they don't do anything about it. So I'm making that very real as much as I can. And then I also feel like in my in-home, what's really helped me is just like, just like, listen to the person, just listen. Like, sometimes I would think so hard about overcoming the objection or that I want to think about it, that I wasn't hearing them. And then they're turned off by me. So trust me, I've done it enough times where I did that. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, you know what I mean? So, but when I'm sitting there and they're saying like, Ooh, you know, whatever. Um, I typically lead them to where I think also they can afford in their budget. Like I'll show them stuff, but I'm not going to show them stuff out of the wazoo. So like, even if they want more, I'm like, Hey, realistically, I know you want that, but the only policy that matters is the one that's in place when you pass, not the one that now no longer exists because it was too much. Mm -hmm. So, and then they now know I'm on their side. I'm not trying to make you spend every dime. You know what I mean? So I am really, really actually looking at their budget and trying to treat someone how I would want to be sat with. If I was on $700 of disability a month, yeah. you know what I mean? So I try to put myself in their shoes. Um, and also just like in the home, I am very now way more so than I was because I used to not be nearly as much was the assumptive thing of like, again, you've heard everybody say it, but this is what we're going to do. Basically, again, like you say on the phone, I'm not giving you an option. Yeah. One thing that Daniel Kirby said to me, I think a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, that is literally genius was, and now I use it all the time is, you know, Mary insurance is not something you buy. It's something you qualify for. Mm -hmm. So that is true. Like I've sat with someone that seemed decently healthy and they got declined for who knows what. And I'm like, what the heck? So, um, all in all, when you're saying in home, it's just really creating a solid amount of value. Like really, truly, you're not just buying like a, a soda, like this is going to be there for a really long period of time to help out your family or, or that sort of thing. So I, I take that part pretty seriously, but it's mainly just like listening and, um, really hearing them and not being afraid to challenge them a little bit. 
So I think, I think that was so strong. I mean, I think at the end of the day, if you show people you care and they know that you care and you're on their side, right? You're not trying to upsell them and get every last dollar. Like you said, you're actually trying to downsell and keep it affordable and comfortable. They're going to feel like you have their best interests in mind. And if they, and then if they know that you care and, and you're real with them, they're going to buy, right? Like they want someone that's actually going to help them, not someone that's just trying to get them for a policy or a dollar, right? And right. so um, I think that's that, that's probably the strongest thing is, you know, pulling the why out and then understanding that you're on their side to help them will definitely help you in the home way more, more than any other kind of tactic or, you know, word track is just being real, especially in the beginning when you don't know your words or you don't know, you know, am I getting my flow down? Is it perfect? And, and, and like, you know, it's just being real with someone and having a conversation, being present and listening to understand, like you said, and getting yeah. that right, and, and that will definitely help. So, well, cool. Thank you for that, Casey. So let's talk a little bit, a, a little bit about team building. So you recently hit senior sales manager. You got mm -hmm. a logo. Congratulations exciting. on that. That's exciting. Thank you. How did, how did it feel to hit that? Oh, God. I was like, we just got to get there. <laughs> I was like, we can do it. Uh, it was great. Um, and, you so, know, oh, go ahead. So how, No, no. Tell, tell us how it felt. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, it, it really was just like... Uh, it was one of those things where like at this job there, there is no shortcut. <laughs> like you have to do the hard work. And then once you've done it and you achieve something like that and everybody's like so excited for you, that's like, man, like I worked for that with the thousands of conversations I had and like the selling and the, and the coaching and the, this, you know what I mean? Like that is like something so rewarding to you when you get your own brand and then people know that that like that's yours so it was super super awesome and i felt like i was like man like the hard work like finally like got paid off for that one thing i was like striving towards so so talk to us what's the name of your brand what's the name of your team and agency um it is ffl zealous zealous i love it all right so so think about this 10 months ago you were just starting at ffl had no experience now you're producing at an extremely high level. You have your own business, you have your own agency, right? So to the people that are watching, today's maybe their first day, maybe they're just getting started, right? Like their first 30, 60 days. Talk to them about what agency building looks like, feels like, um, what's that activity? What, what helped you get there? Because, you know, 10 months is still relatively quick, right? Like, I mean- yeah. You know, are people doing it faster? Sure. But are people doing it, not doing it at all? Absolutely. Right. And to create an agency, you're going to be at VP in no time. You're going to be at SVP shortly after that, within about a year, year and a you know, half, if not faster. Yeah. So it's like, that's great. I mean, and that's, that's amazing to do that. I mean, you've done it faster than I did. Right. And, and it's not about the fastest horse on the track. It's, are you willing to do the work? Are you willing to have the attitude? Are you willing to put in the sweat? equity to, to get what you want and what you deserve in life. And so talk to us a little bit about um, what that looks like, what, what it's looked like throughout this journey, what it looks like now to, to have an agency to, to work with people and, and to help others in a different capacity. Yeah. So, I mean, when it comes to like, there's two roles that Grady always talks about here. And like one is the selling muscle and then one is the building muscle, you know? So, so, the biggest thing that I'm realizing with building muscle is like, okay, you know, the selling muscle is like, okay, I'm going to really listen to these people. And I'm like here for like, you know, these, you know, I'm going to get this sort of thing done. Whereas like being an agency owner, you have to, again, turn around and listen like you would to a client. You know what I mean? So that's one of the things that I'm learning right now too, is I'm like, there are some people that like might need a little bit more attention in certain areas than others that are just going to take off running. Right. So the biggest thing, um, as far as like, kind of building an agency goes, um, is just like y'all, especially if you're looking to do one, just like trust, trust the process. You're going to have thousands of conversations and probably more than you even do on the phone trying to book with clients because sometimes some people, and it's, it's okay. Sometimes some people aren't cut out for this and that's totally fine. And I think you're loving a person more of what I'm realizing of letting them go and being like, hey, after a certain amount of time, if we're not really hitting numbers, I don't want to make you struggle financially. You know, so I think part of being an agency owner is being very honest and like 
but also being incredibly selfless. Like you have got to like offer your time and like your support and, and whatever, like, cause these people, when you go back to how you feel being new, like, I'm so glad Nina poured into me how much she did, because I don't know if I would have like felt the way that I did without her constant support. Right. So I think that's probably the biggest thing with building is like realizing that again, these are people that were in the same spot that you were however long ago, if you just started or 10 months ago for me. And so I think as far as like the pieces of actually building, um, that's just, that's the extra grind hours. And Julius probably knows like, that's not just the selling hours. That's like the, the late hours, the in-between hours, the like getting coaching on how to do this hours, like, and, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, I think it's just more like if you're wanting to be an agency owner, I think really, truly, it's not just about reaching a certain level. Like you are way more of a servant than you are just a salesperson. Like you, you've got to be willing to really give your people the time that they need in order to help them grow and succeed because their success is your success. The success you want everybody to succeed. So. No, that's, that's, that's spot on. I mean, it's, you're building a team, right? And you're helping other people achieve their goals you're helping other people through their challenges and struggles and go through what you've learned over time. Right. And so just sharing your wisdom, right. You know, you've probably heard the saying, each one teach one, right. So if, if every person teaches one person, you can double and double and double pretty quick, but it's, you know, it, it, it is, it does require you to be selfless, like you said. So that's awesome. And the one thing that I learned, I don't know if you've seen this, but it's like, where do you find time when you're trying to sell to also build an agency, right? Like, yeah. That was early struggle. And one of the things that I did early on is in between my appointments, I would listen to music or I would listen to, yeah, I'd be listening to something rather than taking an activity. And once I realized I have all this time in between my in-home appointments on my run days that I could be working on building my business and calling agents and, you know, um, posting on social media to, to, to get some eyeballs on it, just doing different things to drive my business forward that's where things started to take off. Um, and so it's, it's just leveraging your time properly in, in, in doing that activity. But Casey, thank yeah. you so much for pouring in today. Anything else you want to share with the people, whether it's, you know, they're new, they've been here for a, a little while, they want to get over that hurdle, maybe get off their, mon- you know, get the monkey off their back. Anything that comes to your mind that you want to share with the team as we kind of wrap up today? Um, really, truly, the biggest thing I would say is if you're new is like, trust, just, just trust when the person like manager or whoever tells you that it's going to work, it's, it's going to work. They've done it before. They've been through the struggle. They've been through the long dial days. They've been through the slaps in the face. They've been through the in-homes and no sell and that like they've been through it all. And so the biggest thing is like, especially if you guys are all like on Julius's team, like he's done this a lot. And so just like trusting those people of like, well, maybe this wasn't working. And I, and I would challenge all of you to be incredibly responsible for your own actions. Right. So if we sit down and look at like, if it was you versus Julia sitting there dialing and you tell him, Hey, I bought a hundred leads. No one picked up the phone, this, that, and the other. And granted those days happen. Like we've both been through them, but Julius has made 300 dials. And he says, let me see your dial tracker. And you've made like 52 no wonder you're not at appointments. Like, so I would challenge all of you to take a lot of responsibility on yourself and be like, there's a reason that person didn't book with me. There's a reason I didn't sell that. There's a reason. Cause that really kicked myself in the pants of like, if I don't succeed, it's nobody's fault, but my own. Like I really have to take the time. If I'm not good on the phone, I have to ask people who are good on the phone. Like, and I'm just going to honestly badger. I'm going to be like, Hey, what would you say? This, 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 like, and to them, I haven't really had someone that made me feel that I was doing that because they were so willing to help me because I was asking a lot of questions. So I would challenge you to one, take full responsibility. Your activity level is going to either make you succeed or completely fail in this business. And that's just the transparent truth. So ask a lot of questions, take responsibility for your actions and the amount of level of activity that you are not putting in. And be really coachable. If Julius tells you something that like, Hey, this works, I guarantee you it works. 
Like it just does because he's done it before. He's made the mistake, slap on the hand. Okay, that didn't work. So now he's figured out a way, right? So that's the biggest thing is I would just be open to questions and all that kind of stuff. Casey, that is so good. I mean, that 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 that's what people need to know. It's it's about exactly like you said, ownership, responsibility, and reflecting on what you can do better. Everything is a direct reflection of your activity, your attitude, what you do and how you do it. That, and so you said it perfectly. So Casey, thank you so much for pouring into the team. If you guys got value from what Casey shared today, if you can drop a CT in the chat for Casey Trout, she <laughs> is awesome. Casey, thank you so much. It's been amazing to have you on. I'm glad we finally had this conversation that we ah! didn't have before, <laughs> like we talked about earlier, a, a memorable conversation. I will always remember this. Um, obviously, we'll get it up on YouTube. We'll cut it up. But great job. I'm so proud of you. Um, you know, obviously, if you ever need anything, you can always reach out to me. Okay. Yeah, of course. Well, you guys go out and crush it for the rest of the day and feel free to, obviously, Julius is fantastic, but feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions at all for anything. Awesome. Awesome. Guys, um, thank you so much. It is dial day. I want to share two things with you. I'll have you guys off here in just a second. Casey, you're free to go. Um, you're welcome to stay as well. So two things. Bye, guys. Um, we have today and today only we have a 40% off instant internet lead um, discount through work spots. Go into work spots, grab an account if you don't have one. Um, if you do have one, obviously you already know the deal. Um, obviously work spots helps us connect all the different offices within family first life and you save on lead discounts. Your lead discounts alone are, are enough value to get work spots because you're going to save hundreds of dollars compared to the cost of work spots, which is only $99 a month. And last but not least, something super cool is happening this weekend. So this weekend there's a NASCAR race and Family First Life is sponsoring one of the cars racing. So we have our own car guys. If you're a NASCAR fan, I can't say that I am. <laughs> I'll be completely honest with you, but um, I will be looking for it just to, to see how cool it is that we're representing NASCAR on a big platform, on a big stage. So um, with that said, you guys, let's have a great dial day. Let's go help some families. Go, let's go change our financial situations. If there's anything I can do, reach out to me, reach out to any one of our managers. God bless and see you later.